In today's video, I want to go ahead and add the lights to our lasers. Then after we're done that, I want to go ahead and make some adjustments to the lights that we actually have in our trail renderers, well, at least in our, our thrusters. I want to switch that over from just being binary on and off to being adjusted according to our input, or at least that input value coming in, and then we can adjust the intensity of the light, maybe add a modifier to make it really bright. But let's start off with the lasers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab all my lasers. I wanna add a component, which was that light component. Uh, quickly, I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna make some point real time range. I want them pretty small, definitely not that big. Maybe a one. Again, season to taste. Uh, I'm gonna start off, um, we probably should start with an intensity of zero. I'm actually gonna put that in the code itself. Right now, I'm gonna leave it on just so I can see it in the inspector. Bounce intensity, I don't care about. Um, Shadows, yeah, I guess quick quick shadows. I'm just gonna have them flash on and off. I don't think it's really gonna matter. I could go ahead for performance reasons, leave these off. And again, I highly doubt you'd even notice a difference. But we'll just go ahead, we'll start off with them on. So we'll go ahead, we haven't played with cookies or that. Uh, draw halo, there we go. And of course, we don't want them being white. Um, oh, let's do a yellow, season to taste. All right, so I've set them all to the same. There we go, we'll look at them. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and jump into the laser script. Come up to the top, and the first thing I wanna do is make sure that we have that line, or sorry, that light on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure it's a required component in case I ever wanna make a new laser and I attach a script to it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get a reference to it. And let's call it laser light, since we don't wanna use the word light. And of course, we'll have laser light is equal to get the component. The component we are looking for is the light component, which we know is there because of the required field. Now to start off with, um, well, yeah, I guess we'll just start off with it off. We want laser light dot enable is equal to false. And I'm going to come down here. And when we actually go ahead and fire, we'll go ahead and turn it on. And then of course, we gotta turn it back off after the laser has fired. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Um, we still have to go ahead and set up some sort of timer for uh, kind of like um, a fire rate. And when we do that, that's where we're gonna move our can fire to turn back on again. So as it's set right now, they could keep firing really fast. The only delay is how fast the laser actually turns on. So I guess technically if you could push it, you know, precisely at the right time, you could have your laser up all the time. Right now, you can have a very have a very short distance in time between laser shots, but that's okay. We can set that up later. For now, let's just get it shooting. All right, so we need some sort of input for it. And I don't want to put an update in here because we're gonna have multiple lasers, and I don't need all of them checking to see if I press the input. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually just create a script for player input. And this is gonna be the script that is responsible for grabbing all of the input from the player and then passing it around. As far as player movement, let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. All I'm doing is just checking the value of this axis. I could, I guess in theory, grab that in my player input and pass it to wherever it is that needs to be passed. For now, I'm just gonna leave this here as well. Just to be quite honest, I'm probably never gonna take it out of the player movement. But for input, as far as key down and stuff like that, I wanna grab that. So I'm gonna go ahead, we'll just clear all this out, get it to the way I like it. All right, so let's start off with checking the input and we'll say spacebar is to shoot the lasers. So if input.get key, we wanna get key down. So as soon as the spacebar, that first frame, the key is pressed down and we don't want space, sorry. We want key code dot space. We'll get the spacebar. We're gonna do something. Now we wanna go ahead and fire the lasers. And if we go ahead and look at the laser script for the fire laser, we need a vector three for the target position. For now, I'm not gonna bother doing the ray cast and to see if we actually hit anything. All I'm gonna do is just shoot the lasers to the max distance ahead of me. And there's a couple of ways we can do this. If we go ahead and take a look at our ship here, we can take each laser, and let's just say we take the main laser, the one in the middle, for instance. Uh, we could take its transform position and shoot its max distance into, well, the, in front of us. And if we notice these lasers here on the side, they're back a little bit, I think it's one unit but whatever the distance is, they, they shoot a little bit less. Well, there's a couple of ways you can do it. We can just do it in one calculation where we just take some random point on the ship 
In this case, um, if we just take the transform dot position, it'll be right where these axes meet, the center of the ship. And we can just cast from there to shoot all lasers from their start point to a maximum distance from here. Or we could, like I said, take the distance and shoot from here. To be quite honest, it's far enough in the distance, and since I'm not doing the ray casting now, it's just mostly visual. I'm just gonna take the easy road out and calculate from the center here. So we'll jump back into our script, and we are gonna need some way to get in the, the distance from here. So I'm gonna make a public method. And actually, since I'm making a method, all I'm gonna be returning is the distance. We could actually just make the modification here and make it a vector three. Now let's just keep the distance. So for now, we'll just do a float, and I'm just gonna call it distance. And for now, I'm just gonna use a getter. Later on, when we have upgrades and stuff like that, we might wanna be able to adjust it, but for now, we're just gonna go ahead and get that distance. So we're gonna come back in, and we wanna call fire laser on the all the lasers. So we're gonna need a reference to all of the lasers. So I'll create a serialized field. The type of that field will be laser. It's an array, so we gotta make sure we have the square things, and I'm just gonna call it laser. All right, so if we go ahead and hit, we want to iterate through all of these lasers and call their fire. So for each, and we want to grab the laser, which we'll call L in the laser array or collection. And we're going to call L dot fire laser. And we need some sort of position to set. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate that position here. And that position is going to be equal to, like I said, our transform dot position. And then we want to add that distance to it. So what we do is we take transform dot forward, which is one unit directly in front of us, and we go ahead and multiply it by that distance. In this case, it's actually gonna be L dot fire laser, and we're gonna to have to move this and like that. So that means we will need some parentheses in here. I was originally just gonna go ahead and just make it 300 at the, front, at the top here, put a magic number in and shoot it, but let's go ahead and just put it in here. Since I know it's not the final calculation I'm doing, I'm not that worried about it. I just want to get the, the structure set up. All right, so quick reiteration, we're going to go through all of the lasers, which we're calling L in our laser array. We're going to go ahead and calculate that position out, which we really should cache this. But we'll go ahead, we'll throw it out. And order of operation states that this multiplication is going to be done before this addition. But for some reason, I still like to add my parentheses. Then we're going to add that to our current position. We're going to pass that in to laser to tell it its final point to shoot to. And we got an error. What did I miss? And this is supposed to be distance. There we go. The errors go away. So let's go ahead. We'll start it up. And let's fire those lasers. Uh, before we do that, we probably should make sure that we assign those lasers. <laughs> so we'll go ahead, we'll lock the inspector. Go over, grab all the lasers, drag and drop them on top of, oh, lasers. Cancel. Uh, we didn't even add the laser or player input script yet. We better do that. Now we can go drag and drop them on. We'll go ahead, we'll unlock it. And let's try it out now. There we go, and of course when we shoot, um, I've got it set really long, don't I? A half a second. Uh, let's make it a tenth of a second, that's probably still too long too. And we can see the lights being turned on. If we go ahead and look directly at the ship. And we fire the lasers, they're being turned on. Let's make it even shorter, I think. Uh, maybe half that. And it sounds like my kid's playing with the dog upstairs, so we might have to cut this one short. All right, so yeah, that seems pretty good. We'll go ahead and start flying around, shoot these lasers out. Did I adjust the distance at which I follow at? Let me check. I'm going to have to go ahead and adjust all these values again, but that's fine. Laser off time. We add another zero in here. Uh, ba -ba go appear to player movement. No, it looks, looks the same. I actually have two player movement scripts. I must have added the wrong one. Now, because I did that, makes me all paranoid now, so now I want to start coming in. Uh, where's player movement? One more tag that I use a lot of, gets rid of those errors at three in the morning. And that's the disallow multiple component. 
So I can't add this script more than once. So now if I come in and try to add that player movement script again, I get an error. And we probably should do that with the lasers too. Script to the top. There we go. Now let's go ahead, we'll try that out. Luckily it really wasn't screwing with anything there, but in some cases it can. There we go. Oh, space bar. There we go. So we're shooting our lasers, and our lasers are going where we want them to. Great. Now I want to go ahead and play around with the thruster. So let's come into the thruster script. So we have this activate where we're just turning things on and off. I think what I want to do now is play around with the intensity. So instead of turning them on and off, I'm just going to go ahead and comment this out. We'll pass the value of our axis in. And we'll go ahead and play with the intensity as well. So we'll need an intensity variable in here. Or sorry, not variable method. Uh, so public, void, and I'm going to be passing in a float value. And I'm just going to call it intent. I'll save that off. Let's quickly jump back in. And again, we'll just iterate through all of our thrusters and call the right method. So t dot intensity. The intensity we want to put in is the input value of the axis. There we go. And I'm actually just going to put a space here. And do we need to turn anything off here? I don't believe so. That should work just the way it is. The rest of the work we have to do is in thrusters. So I'm going to go in and say thruster light dot intensity is equal to in 10. And I know I want to have it be brighter than one at full speed. So I'm just going to hard code in a multiplier of two right now. I'm going to go ahead and save that off. And later on, we can go ahead and even adjust the length of our trail renderer. Right now, since I'm at a keyboard, you know, it's a binary input. It's either going to quickly ramp up to one or ramp back down to zero as I move. Uh, but when you get something like a controller that you can use to fly around your ship, you can hold it like halfway to you know, all the way forward. So you're only giving 50% input. When you get into cases like that, it might be nice to be able to have that max length of your trail render be a little bit shorter. So adjusting that time variable. But for now, let's just go ahead and work on the light itself. So I'm going to completely get rid of activate. I'll just comment it out now. I don't like to get rid of code right away. And in start, uh, we don't want to turn them off anymore. What I want to do is go thruster light dot intensity is equal to zero though. I want to go ahead and make sure that those are not turned on. And I think that might be it. If that's the case, we'll be able to get rid of our trail renderer reference as well. So let's go ahead and make sure there's no errors. Uh, so yeah, there we go. There's our trail renderer we're no longer using in code. That's okay. We'll start it up. And notice when I hit start and stop it, Kind of glows and unglows. Now, once we actually start adding a really cool skybox, looking to some lens flares, I think the effect is going to be really good. We might even get rid of the halos a bit. Again, it's just it's just another way to do it. I think it, the effect itself in the end result is going to look really good. But either way, we got our lights hooked up to our lasers. We got our lasers firing into the distance when we hit spacebar. We've gone ahead and adjusted our thruster lights so that they dim and glow according to our maximum thrust that we're being put into it. And that's good enough for today for me. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>